All right, so it's now a week later and I've now had a chance to test this thing out a bit and uh, I'm impressed. All right, so first I wanted to run through a couple quick things that I really liked about this computer, just to kind of rapid fire go through them. Uh, the trackpad is amazing. It's one of those things that there's something that Apple does about trackpads that's just so much better than any Windows laptop that I've tried. So there's something that Apple knows about making trackpads that the rest of the world needs to get in on. And the second part to this is the keyboard, which I really like. I think that it's so much better than the 2018 model that I have, uh, where they had, I don't know if they had like the silicon or butterfly, whatever they call it. They have lots of different names for them, but this one is really good and it's so much better than that one. I also think that it's better than my Dell XPS 15 from 2020, but this is one of those things that's highly like user specific. It's something that's very individual. So this is just my personal opinion. Uh, so don't take this as like all Apple laptops keyboards are way better than everything else. Uh, it's just my opinion. I feel like this one is better. So those were just some quick more generic things that I wanted to rip through right off the bat. And now we can get into the meat of this review, which is going to be speed, cooling, compatibility and my overall verdict. First off, speed. You've probably seen the Cinebench scores by now, so I won't iterate on them. What I did instead was I did a simple test using a super basic Python for loop script that just printed out a number each loop from zero to 900 million. And I ran this for about four minutes on my old 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro and on this new 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020 with the M1 chip. All right, so now you should be able to hear the difference between these two machines. This is the 2018 model. And that's the 2020 13 inch model. This one is not making any sound. So if you're hearing any sound when I was trying to record that, it's not making any sound. This one is making a lot of sound. It's kind of struggling. It's getting really hot as well. This one is not hot at all. The key difference was that the M1 chip was more than double as fast. It also remained completely silent to the point where I couldn't hear a sound if I put my ear on the laptop. It also stayed cold, as cold as most laptops are that have gone to sleep or that are off. Compared to the 2018 model, which was slower by half and which also started to rev up the fans to be pretty loud, and it also started to build some real heat. The main takeaways for me with the M1 chip has been that it's silent to the point where you're feeling like you're working on a laptop that is asleep or even off, because I haven't gotten it yet to turn on the fans nor to make a sound of any kind that would suggest that it's revving up. Oh, and uh, speaking of whatever I was talking about, this video is sponsored by Dashlane. Dashlane is a desktop and mobile app for any new device that you get this year. Dashlane saves and autofills all your passwords on every website, so you never have to click the forgot password again. It also allows you to easily share your passwords with friends and family and without having to actually reveal the password, which I found very useful. Dashlane also has a secure autofill feature that easily works for personal information and credit cards, saving you time when shopping online this holiday season and also keeps your financial information secure. Dashlane's built-in VPN with country selection means that you can access what you want wherever you are. With Dashlane, you're getting a password manager, VPN and dark web monitoring for less than what just one of those services usually costs. So to make your life easier this time of year, try Dashlane on your first device for free at dashlane.com slash cal. And when you want to upgrade to premium, use my code cal for 25% off. There's a link in the description. Next thing that we're going to look at is cooling. And that's one of the things I haven't been able to make this thing hot at all. And I need to test this a little bit more, but nothing that I've thrown at it so far has made it increase in temperature in a way that I would actually notice or like rev up the fans in a way that I would notice. And what I've done so far is I've worked in Visual Studio Code on a relatively large code base. I've also worked in Flutter and like built and rebuilt different projects. And to me, it performs better than any laptop that I've ever tried. 
It even performs on par with my desktop PC, which is pretty insane. And this is for building to physical devices, so not actually simulators, which I think potentially once they get support for that, this could work even better. I also spent about eight hours straight one day just installing all the different things that I normally use on a computer. And that means like running multiple different Chrome tabs and like downloading things, installing things, watching YouTube videos, doing lots of different things. And it never even got slightly warm. And to my perception, it stayed the same temperature throughout the entire eight hours of work, which is something that like, to normal laptops, I feel like it, it's always like if you run multiple Chrome tabs and you're installing different things, it will get hot and it will kind of rev up the fans and will make a lot of sound and it'll kind of feel like you're taxing the laptop a lot. But this just stayed the same throughout the entire day. And again, like the best way to describe this is the feeling of like working on a laptop that's kind of turned off. And so it kind of just felt like everything that I was throwing at it throughout that day was just child's play to this machine. So this sounds really good and it is really good, but now we get to compatibility. As of shooting this video, here are a couple hurdles that I ran into. Number one, homebrew wasn't compatible. Number two, Flutter works, but you can only run on physical devices, so the simulators don't work yet. Number three, certain Python libraries seem to be a problem working with, which is why I haven't been able to test machine learning properly. TensorFlow is supposed to work, but Scikit-Learn, which is what I have used in the past, doesn't work, or at least I wasn't able to get it to work. I really want to try out the neural engine and see kind of how it performs with machine learning and all of that stuff. So if you're really knowledgeable and you know of a simple test that I could run or you know how to write a simple test that I could run in TensorFlow or in something that works or that should work on the M1 chip, then feel free to leave a comment or send me an email about it because I really want to try that out in a future video and kind of see how that actually performs because I think there will be some really quite interesting uh, results from that since this chip is like made for machine learning. So compatibility issues are a real thing and it's something to consider. However, keep in mind that in time, most of these things will most likely get fixed. Now for my overall verdict, which is that there are definitely some issues for working with it right now in terms of compatibility. But we should note that if you use Rosetta, you can run these things. It will be in a virtual machine type thing, which is not optimized. So the performance won't be as good as it would be natively, but you can run them. With time, these things will work. But if you're looking to use this right now as your main machine, then I would suggest looking into the things that you want to use and making sure that they are available or checking when they will be available. Other than that, I'm really impressed. And I really think that this is one of those things that will propel Apple away from their competitors. And and I also think that it's really interesting that this is the first time that Apple is no longer limited by what Intel or AMD is able to create, but they now have full control of creating their processors and making sure that they work in the most optimized way possible. And I think that this is one of those moves that will put Apple in a league of its own for a couple of years. And this is not because I think that Apple is necessarily better than Intel or AMD at creating processors. I think that Apple could potentially just create an equal processor to Intel or AMD, but because of the fact that they're able to handle everything in-house and kind of develop everything in unison, they're able to then squeeze every last bit of performance out of that chip. Whereas Intel and AMD, they have to optimize for a variety of different users, operating systems and hardware in a way that kind of makes sure that it's gonna leak a little bit of performance there compared to what Apple can do. So I wanna use this analogy here that I came up with that I think is really good and maybe it's not, but if you imagine that Intel and AMD is kind of like an all round shoe company maker or shoemaker uh, in the sense that they're making a shoe that's gonna be able to run, do trail running, regular running, walking. It should be appropriate for the office. It should be appropriate for going out for dinner in the city. It's kind of meant to do all of those things at once. So that means that that shoe is not optimal for either of those things, but you can kind of use it for all of those things. And in a sense, that's kind of what Intel and AMD is doing right now. Whereas Apple has decided that they're gonna focus on just trail running. They're just gonna maximize that and optimize for trail running. That's what they wanna focus on. And that is essentially what Apple is doing. They're creating one chip that's gonna work for one OS, that's gonna work with one set of hardware that's very specified that they control. And they're basically just working all this in to optimize for one single laptop. 
That's why now, after having tried this M1 chip, I really think that Intel and AMD have an uphill battle coming, and it'll be really interesting to see kind of what they come up with now that Apple has like quite literally lit a fire underneath them and really put some pressure on them to innovate fast in order to keep up. So I think 2021 might be a really interesting year, and at least like I'm really looking forward to seeing how this will all play out. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.